Can we start? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, the uh, data center session for uh, Africa conference. Uh, this is Pusun Jo from KISTI. I'm chairing over this session. Uh, we had uh, three speakers for uh, data centers. Uh, yep. I'm, I'd like to introduce the, the first speakers for uh, this session. Uh, uh, he is the, the name is uh, yeah, Dong Yoon Kim, he is from KISTI. He is a principal engineer for uh, the, in Koreanet. Uh, the topic is uh, the owner's based uh, location and load where virtually the dedicated containers networking over Koreanet as. Please welcome the, the Dong Yoon Kim. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is Dong Kyung Kim from KISTI South Korea. And I'm very glad to uh, join this Africa conference, especially to talk about owner space, the location, and load aware virtually dedicated container networking over Creonet S. So here are the contents of my talk. So I would like to uh, briefly introduce Creonet and Creonet S in the first place, and then go over the owner space virtually dedicated network applications, VDN orchestration, and VDN CNI technologies we recently developed. So uh, what is Creonet? Actually, Creonet is the national research networking infrastructure in Korea, providing up to 100 gigabit per second networking for our users in the field of you know, science and technology. And it has nationwide 17 gigapops in Korea and four international connections to the United States, China, and Europe. And we have been collaborating with many global you know, networking and research partners like Starlight, Genie, and Glyph, etc. since 1988. And recently we started a new network softwareization project that is called Creonet S. So this uh, Creonet S is actually designed for migrating the you know, existing Creonet infrastructure to be more open, virtualized, and intelligent, and also automated network environment. So the main goal of Creonet S is to become the first production-ready SDN-wide air networking infrastructure and environment for advanced RNA community in Korea, providing you know, new user services and experiences based on reliable SDN operations. So we have four principal building blocks for Creonet S, uh, mostly originated from basic SDN architecture, such as data plane, control plane, and application and services. So the data plane network of Creonet S is currently using OpenFlow 1.3, and we are considering the Stratum P4, TR1, and NetConf for our further you know, data network, you know, data plane uh, network technology and uh, southbound interface. And uh, con currently, uh, Creonet is using the, you know, ONOS as its control plane, and also based on the, you know, uh, so, uh, northbound APIs exposed by ONOS, uh, we developed our own virtual network technology, that is the VDN, the virtually dedicated networking, and the VDN O, the VDN orchestrator, was recently implemented for some specific use cases like uh, virtual science DMG, IoT, etc. So let me introduce those building blocks one by one from this slide. So uh, for the Creonet S data plane network, we have been deploying the Creonet infrastructure uh, since 2015 in many locations. And until 2017, we actually deployed the Creonet you know, data plane networks in six locations in Korea and United States. So here, as you can see, the Seoul, Daejeon, Gwangju, Changwon, and Busan networking center were softwareized over Creonet S. And in 2016, specifically, we made the first you know, SDN wide area networking connection internationally uh, with the Starlight facility in the United States. So Starlight is actually the NS funding project, and it is one of the most you know, renowned uh, research networking exchange point uh, located in you know, Chicago in the United States. 
And uh, in the end of last year, we deployed the Creonet S you know, network infrastructure in two more locations in the United States and China. So in case of the you know, United States, we deployed the open flow based network device at Pacific Northwest Gigapub in Seattle. And in, I mean, in the China side, we deployed you know, open flow network devices and also individual you know, SN controller there in Hong Kong. So there are, there are actually currently you know, uh, two uh, individual SN domains in Korea and China operating. So we need to uh, you know, kind of wait to connecting those two individual SN control domains. So we use you know, uh, VDN Federation technology we developed. So those two network domains, Creona S and uh, CSD Cloud SN domains were federated and connected with each other and it is operating very lively now. So as you can see here in the right side, uh, the successful ping test result is shown. So you can easily see how those two networks are federated and operating now. And this is the highlight of Creonet S International uh, Data Play Network. So currently we have three international uh, SDN wider networking connections over Creonet S to uh, Chicago, Seattle, and Hong Kong. And uh, we have a plan to expand this infrastructure to Europe this year. And in terms of Creona S control plane, we are now operating on a space to logically centralize the SN control platform, which is uh, mainly designed for you know, high availability and scale out, et cetera. Uh, those are you know, key features of Ono's control platform. And since 2015, we are upgrading and updating actually the Ono's control platform with a newly released version of Ono's since 1.2.2 cardinal release to uh, actually 1.11.1 run release. So those you know, new release version of Onos is actually dealing with the, you know, uh, imp uh, improved scalability and the performance, etc. So we are actually uh, uh, upgrading those you know, um, control plane with Onos these days. And uh, recently, uh, as of today, uh, we deployed the uh, 1.13.1 version of Onus, Nightingale release for Creon S control plane, which is uh, known as one of the most stable and reliable version of Onus in our own experiment and uh, operational experiences. So this multi-node Onus cluster is now controlling and managing the multi-vendor uh, network devices of you know, Creon S coming from Brocade Arista and HQO networks. So those multi-vendor network devices are controlled by Onos and a three or five node Onos cluster using a single, you know, southbound interface that is OpenFlow 1.3. And uh, open for virtual switches can also can dynamically attach it to this network topology as well for any further, you know, experiment or research. And on top of Onos, using, you know, Onos APIs, we developed our own virtual network uh, application that is a virtually dedicated networking. So this is mainly designed for, you know, and uh, implemented for providing owner based virtual network provisioning for on-demand high performance and high security dedicated networking for our users. So in 2015, we developed the first and initial version of VDM Manager and Graphical User Interface. And next year, then actually we uh, released the first version of beta, I mean, uh, system of VDN that includes VDN core technologies like uh, path computation element and uh, several other interfaces. And in 2017, finally, uh, we released the first, you know, production ready, you know, official uh, release of VDN and we started the uh, experimental services at the time. So this official version actually included the improved version of VDN core, that is VDN manager, and the new modules and virtual uh, network functions were also added on to this you know, VDN system. And uh, we performed re-architecting and refactoring for whole overall VDN systems for the you know, enhancement of stability and performance. And this is the overall VDN architecture of a Creona S as of today. So as you can see here, there are four uh, 
principal components for VDN systems. So in the left side, um, you can see the VDN core incorporated with you know, VDN slicing, VDN federation, topology synchronization, recovery, and uh, VDN reactive forwarding modules. And also we have several virtual network functions like a VDN you know, DHCP and virtual network access control implemented for you know, VDN systems. And uh, upper side, uh, there are several interfaces provided by VDN systems. Those are you know, graphical user interfaces, restful interfaces, and uh, command line interfaces, uh, which actually allow you know, each end user and uh, administrators and the external systems to access the VDN system very you know, easily and efficiently. So right side, there are external systems for VDN systems, like, uh, such as ID Federation and status monitoring system. And each system, you know, those ex external systems can be interacting with VDN system uh, using the, you know, the uh, interfaces I already mentioned, and also the data store of VDN uh, based on JSON-DB and InfluxDB. So, uh, those, you know, um, four principal components are tightly integrated to uh, provide the reliable and stable, you know, virtual networking services for our users over Creonet S. And here are some demo video clips for several VDM functionalities. So upper left side, you can see the VDM manager we developed. Uh, actually, this is uh, uh, implemented for each end user to create, update, and delete their own virtual dedicated networks. And each user can also generate and manage their own security policy based on five tuple-based virtual network access control in the you know, lower left side, on a specific VDN, like a, a v SDN IP VDN. And you can see uh, several other you know, functionalities of VDN. They are virtual network slicing and experiments inside the VDN. And uh, also interest in domain, you know, virtual network federation technologies uh, being shown here. So it is uh, currently now applied for the Korea to China a federated SDN network environment. So this is the current deployment status of Creonet S uh, over eight locations totally in Korea, United States, and China. So actually, as you can see here, the Creonet S is a uh, kind of single physical and shared SDN wide area networking infrastructure and uh, using VDN technology and application, each user can generate their own virtual dedicated network like this for their you know, specific applications or services or experiments. And each of the VDN has its own network topology with some you know, required network performance guaranteed as well. And the VDN, the virtual dedicated network, can be also automatically and intelligently integrated with Kubernetes-based containerized service resources. So recently uh, implemented VDNO, VDN Orchestrator application, uh, can actually control and manage the virtual networking you know, resources and containerized computing and storage resources all together with owners, Kubernetes, and uh, Creonet as you know, infrastructure. So, uh, the newly implemented Creole as VDN Orchestrator is actually designed for auto selection and allocation of service and container resources based on you know, two metrics shown here. So the first one is the location proximity to each end host with some specific and predefined weights. And the resource utilization is another metric, such as you know, memory and CPU loads, storage capacity, et cetera. And uh, we take two approaches for the you know, selection of service location. So the first one is the static selection. So using this uh, uh, way of static selection, uh, the service location can be designated and the newly created part should be connected to the you know, selected service location. And another one, you know, um, uh, actually 
way of selection, I mean, selecting service location is the intelligent way. So uh, if we actually take the intelligent selection, uh, there should be no designated service location like this. And in this case, PDNO can intelligently and automatically decide where the newly created path can be connected. So actually those, those uh, you know, intelligence can be you know, achieved by uh, the metrics I mentioned and uh, by the you know, algorithm we implemented. And eventually, a VDN, the virtual dedicated network, can be generated, including all the you know, created parts, service resources, user and the host, service gateway, like IP gateway, and uh, several VNFs, like uh, virtual DHCP and virtual network access control. So, and uh, we also implemented the VDN container network interface. So this VDN CNI is actually implemented to connect the path resources to the Creonet as infrastructure with dedicated networking interface that can be you know, recognized by owners and VDN automatically. And the newly generated path can also be configured automatically with the dynamic IP address allocation. So those functionalities are actually provided by virtual, uh, I mean, dedicated network CNI and virtual DHCP functionality on VDN. So, in this way, the each generated path can guarantee a certain level of you know, network throughput uh, in an end-to-end -end manner. So we measure the VDN CNI performance over one gigabit per second and 10 gigabit per second multiple virtual dedicated networks provisioned for distributed you know, Kubernetes testbed in Daejeon, Seoul, and Busan. So you can see the, you know, the iPhone 3 performance uh, test result in the right side. Uh, they are actually uh, tested uh, for the throughput of DTM pairs in 1G and 10G VDNs. And uh, each of the you know, test results shows the 940 megabit per second and 9.86 gigabit per second respect respectively for 1G and 10G VDN. So we can say it's, uh, it shows uh, you know, fairly nice you know, uh, network throughput. And this is a demo for VDN orchestrator with VDN CNI. Uh, this is newly implemented. So on the left side, you can see the VDN O GUI. Uh, each user can use this GUI to input several you know, host uh, resource you know, requirement, like uh, four core CPU, four gigabyte memory, and 40 gigabyte storage, etc. And the uh, user can also select uh, uh, end host to be included in specific VDN from several locations, like uh, Chicago, Busan, and Seoul, and Daejeon. So those selected you know, end host will be included in a VDN, and let's leave service location optimum, you know, the location to be uh, automatically decided. So you can see here, A part is uh, dynamically generated and connected to a uh, Daejeon networking center in this case automatically. And another, you know, we are going to add another, you know, service resource with several, you know, new requirements like a five core CPU, etc. And uh, at this time, we designate the service location in Seoul. So newly created part, you can see here, should be connected to a uh, Seoul networking center in this case. So this you know, connection can be made by using the VDN CNI we recently implemented. So let's you know, make a VDN as a next step. And you can see the list of properties on the paths here. And uh, we are going to show you the you know, network topology of VDN we just created. So uh, we are going to select the newly created VDN from this VDN list uh, by the name of it. I mean, so VDN O test, and this shows the you know, brief information of the new VDN. And you can see the VDN's dedicated network topology. This is a totally you know, isolated network topology from the you know, shared network infrastructure. And this topology and the this VDN actually includes the service resources created by you know, Kubernetes 
and you know, several user and host, IP gateway, and the virtual network functions like a virtual DHCP and virtual network access control. So we can say this is rather software-defined infrastructure than just software-defined networking. And uh, it can be provided for our end users. And I would like to introduce several use cases uh, based on VDNO application. The first one is uh, Virtual Science DMG. I'm not sure you are familiar with Virtual Science DMG or Science DMG, but uh, in, uh, actually for the community of RNA networking, the Science DMG is quite important, you know, research and collaboration uh, environment. So Science DMG is kind of, you know, local networking site uh, that is composed of two, uh, you know, uh, main elements such as high performance dedicated networking and the data transfer node for, you know, big data transfer, you know, high performance big data transfer. So those data transfer nodes called the DTNs are located in each site, local site, like a campus, research lab, or organization. So each on-site VDN can be sliced using VDN to guarantee very high performance of networking and uh, uh, big data transfer uh, like this or like this. So this can be, this VDN can be provisioned, you know, on demand and dynamically by the need of each, you know, DTNs and end users. So this is the original, you know, use case uh, we can save uh, based on science DMG and the VDN. But actually we would like to uh, do science DMG environment more virtualized using VDN O application. So um, using VDN O, the on-site DTNs can be moved into the edge network of Creonet S to be virtualized and to be containerized. So the virtual containerized DTNs can also intelligently integrate with Creonet S and VDN environment so that we can provide the end-to-end as then controllable, orchestrated, virtually dedicated networking with containerized and, uh, you know, Kubernetes-based distributed service resources altogether. And another use case is about IoT to VDN integration and orchestration. So this orchestration, uh, we can, uh, we believe actually the, this kind of you know, orchestration can provide kind of you know, VDN slices for IoT data centers or IT gateways to gain the on-demand, dynamic, high throughput and secure connections for I IoT devices, data centers and gateways. And also um, based on the you know, edge networking you know, principle, we believe we can gain low latency, data locality, and the bandwidth savings as well. And another use case is the orchestration for the you know, internationally federated the SDN networks, for example, Korea to China federated networks. So using the, you know, uh, th this kind of infrastructure, uh, we'll be able to provide on-demand dynamic virtual network slices internationally, including you know, scientific instruments and uh, cloud-based, you know, cloud-native uh, service resources and the host and some, you know, virtual network functions as well. So this can be provided as one of the, you know, international software-defined infrastructure, we believe. And uh, last but not least, use case is the network intelligence. So. As mentioned, we already, you know, deployed and developed the VDN and uh, Creonet S technologies and uh, infrastructure based on several, you know, layers like uh, infrastructure layer, control layer, and virtualization layer. So on top of those layers, we'd like to add one more layer, like uh, autonomic uh, layer for self-driving networks. So we are currently, currently we are actually working on the orchestrator development and uh, we'll move on to network big data analytics and open AI and policy services engine development with several advanced university in Korea and KT, Korea Telecom, from this year. So uh, we are going to uh, make this you know, network intelligence uh, realized sooner or later. So that project will last for five years. 
next five years. So let me conclude my talk here. QRLS is actually a software-defined wide-area networking, and it is moving forward now to the software-defined interconnections and orchestration, and also network intelligence environment. And our further work will include this year uh, the new release of video development and orchestrated deployment, orchestrated deployment over Creonet S. And uh, we are going to expand the global SDN WAN infrastructure, and uh, we are going to work on uh, any further collaborations with you know, United States, China, and any Asia Pacific countries and partners. So we are seeking for international SDN collaboration now. So that's it for my talk, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. If anybody has uh, some question or comment for uh, Dr. Tongyu Kim. Okay, the, I have one thing for that. It's, uh, uh, this is uh, for the internet operators and uh, internet managers. So I wanted to, could you explain some uh, story about uh, how to, when you were this, provide a service like this uh, server function or service, maybe some need, sometimes we need to uh, uh, maybe do the troubleshooting to the make the, some connection or uh, the provide the service. Is there any cases for how to the, uh, maintain or uh, your infrastructure, how to the, uh, the, the troubleshooting for especially if it's a uh, uh, SCN like thing, so it's a very e not easy to the using the commercial or the current the tool to uh, troubleshooting the internet like thing. Could you explain something about that? Okay, uh, that's very, you know, important and a hard question to answer, I guess. So, um, actually, as you know, SDN is based on uh, some more layers compared to uh, the internet or the, you know, traditional networking. Though, I mean, one of the important layers is the control platform or, you know, control plane. So uh, we are actually uh, focusing on the reliability and stability of you know controller. That is why we cho chose Onos as a, our control platform. You know, Onos is based on you know multi instances of controller. Uh, so in that way, the uh, S our SDN WAN you know infrastructure can gain a certain level of you know of reliability because uh, if one can one you know instance of controller fails, the other, you know, instance of instances, uh, one of the other instances can, you know, take over the role of a controller. In that way, actually, you can gain some level of, you know, high availability. And uh, we are now also uh, operating uh, some, you know, status monitoring system for our, you know, infra SDN infrastructure uh, based on three layers of the networks, the infrastructure, control, and virtualization layer. So uh, this is actually what we are working on for the you know, reliable operations of our infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, Dong Yoo Kim. Please, uh, if you can. OK, the move to the next speaker. He's the, uh, the name is Ikura Nakajima. He's from the line. The topic is uh, automation over close with EBGP as lines. Please welcome. Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, hi there, I'm Nakajima at Line. Today, I will talk about automation of cloud network with EBGP at Line. At first, A little bit about line. We are a messenger platform focusing on a part of Asia. They are Taiwan, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, and Japan. The number of users is beyond. Uh, oh, sorry. The number of users is beyond 165 million, and they. Uh, use our app almost every day. 
this is very high engagement. Then on this messenger platform, we cover a variety of services like news, music, uh, and uh, games, and so on. And recently, we've been focusing on working on fintech-related services. And it turns out a handful of services in this area are released in just the last year. And we need this, we definitely need this uh, agility in our infrastructure. And also, capacity is very important because we operate a massive scale application messenger platform. But in the previous traditional network architecture, we have some issues in cap capacity and agility as listed here. There's a limitation on the capacity, maybe as you know. In our worst case scenario, there is up to more than 80% loss of bandwidth between servers in the traditional network. And it, it imposes a scheduling issue on our private cloud and its users. Our private cloud with the scale is growing and rapidly. On the other hand, our manual setting of network devices take much time for its development with the lack of automation. In order to solve these issues, we decided to adapt closed network. This change strongly determines our services and enhance the capacity and the agility. The top topology you see behind me is the closed network for one pod. We adapt five stage clause. In fish traffic from a, from a server goes up to spine node. You can also call it a uh, super spine and down to a server. We also considered three stage clause with chassis instead of all box switches but we chose not to have a large failure domain of it. Of course, the number of cables and transceivers is the main drawback of five-stage clause. But robustness and scalability seems more important than the downside of five-stage clause. In addition, we adapt white box switches then the main reason for this is the automation-friendly features such as zero-touch provisioning and busy pin unnumbered. I will explain it later. It's important for us to choose switches that can be provisioned without manual operation to the top, to, to the point where we can access via SSH to the switches. And on top of that, it should have minimum parameters to configure BGP to make our automation simple as much as possible. At the time, we considered this design, Cumulus Network OS on a, uh, on a uh, white box, was only the choice that meet these requirements. And in this slide, I put the number of links and the bandwidth of the topology to make it clear that this, is, this, that, uh, this network is non-blocking from bottom to the top. The number of servers in our typical pod is 7200. 7, Each server has to uplink and that one of them is active. From TOL to spine, there is more than 720 links of 100 gig between the layers of TOL and uh, leaf, and leaf and spine. The total bandwidth of active uplinks of servers, that is, uh, that is 72 terabit, equal to or less than 
capacity of the network that is more than 72 terabit, as you can see in this slide. We also have some changes on the connection between servers and top of rack switches. In the previous network, each server has redundant links with L2 technology like bonding, in which switching the active link causes a loss of packets. And to stay away from it, we chose to expand BGP peering down to servers. It allows us to simplify the network and maintain TORs without any disruption, which make us, makes our life much easier than before, before by eliminating the maintenance announcement and the related negotiations. On top of that, removing the L2 links enables us to N plus one redundancy with horizontal scaling. But to do this, there's a big, there's a big requir requirement for it, that is the implementation of BGP routing on servers. In our case, FRR, uh, FRR is running on hypervisors and advertise most specific route, that is slice 32, of virtual machines to TORs. With some modification in OpenStack component, L2 extension become possible without a traffic capsulation approach like VXLAN. About the modification, you can find more through the link below. So far, I mentioned how the cross network proven to be beneficial in the, in the capability, uh, sorry, in capacity. Non-blocking network for 7,200 servers and the scalability of all L3 links down to servers. But I didn't say much about automation. That is today's main topic. This is a picture in our data center showing uh, heaps of nodes and cables. When you're in front of them with your own laptop in your hands, the first thing popping up in your mind will be automation. In fact, the automation is mandatory so as to provision all of them as rapidly as the service expand. I will go through the automation process in the rest of my slides. So hopefully, you might have a solid image on the automated network and feel the benefit from it that would back up your step toward automation in your network. Our automation can be divided to three steps of initial setting, cable, check, uh, cable connection check, and configuration. Technically, the order is a little bit different from the actual flow. Cable con connection check is done after a part of configuration, but let me explain this in the order shown in this slide to make it more simple. In this initial setting, all nodes are provisioned to be accessible via SSH. In the cable connection check, it is confirmed that actual topology is same as expected. And at third step of configuration, we provision protocols such as BGP and make sure that traffic traverses the network and the entire network is ready for service. So let me start from the first step of initial setting. As you see in the picture, no one in the room might, not, might be very happy. Uh, no one in this room might be very happy to type the same commands again and again for IP address assignment and network OS uh, installation. In this step, DHCP and ZTP script can do it for you. 
Firstly, in response to a DHCP request from a switch, DHCPD replied the IP address mapped to the hardware of the switch, as you can see in a uh, first step. And uh, the switch received the URL for ZTP script that is used for zero touch provisioning. Then, following the procedures written in the script, switch installed the ONI installer to install the network OS and edit setting for accounts and so on. Once all procedures are completed, they can be accessible via SSH for further configuration. You can find more details on manuals provided by QMOS network, but in this step, what to do is to configure DHCPD and web server and create ZTP script adjusted to one's own environment. Then the next step is cable connection check. Now we have switches, they are ready for access from SSH, and what we have to do is check that uh, actual topology. In our typical pod with 70 to 100 servers, the number of links between switches are more than 2,000. Checking them at site to find out the wrong cabling is a time-consuming endeavor and is error-prone. This is exactly where we can also leverage the power of automation. Let me go with an example of a cabling check on the interface of switchboard one on the leaf node in the middle. At first, we generate a file called topology dot, referring to the cable list with which we outsource the cabling. This file is written in a simple syntax that consists of two nodes and those interfaces connecting to the other. Cumulus has a feature called PTM to check the difference between the output of LLDP and the content of topology dot. And the output is here. And we gather the output of the command on all switches by running a Python script that helps us recognize the wrong connection at the glance. Here is uh, where I have to check. And this time, there's no failure. But if you have some failures, the number is shown in this area. Then I move on to configuration, specifically for BGP. Let's take a leaf node as an example again. One leaf node has 28 BGP peers, and in a typical pod, the number of BGP peers from leaf is over 500. As we need a large number of peering, it is very beneficial for us to use the network devices that require minimum number of parameters for BGP setting. In general, we need to define five parameters, such as the address of the interface for peering, router ID, autonomous system numbers called ASN for own side and peer side, and the address on the peer. But when we configure BGP peering with Cumulus, only one parameter router ID is required to decide, and other parameters can be automatically decided. Here are some techniques we use. Actually, there are three techniques. And first, using a IPv6 link local, link local address on the interface for peering. IP address can be set without an explicit assignment like we do in the manual setting. 
ASM can be calculated by the formula shown in this slide with the router ID here. Router ID that we assign a unique address on each node. So ba because based on the unique address, ASN can be also unique. And third technique is the, uh, on the address and ASN on the peer. They are also set automatically on Cumulus. Actually, it is depending on the implementation of uh, BZP and numbered on Cumulus, but uh, this is an example. And by means of calculation with IPv6 link local address and BZP, BZP open message from the peer, you don't, have, you don't need to decide address and remote, remote AS number. What you have to do is just uh, put an interface on the configuration and just say it is external. It means eBGP process. For automation of BGP peering and others, uh, so uh, in this slide, I wanted, to, I wanted to say with these techniques, uh, parameters we have to decide is just dramatically decreased. And for the automation of BGP peering and others, generation of inventory file for Ansible is our first step to do. As I mentioned in previous slide, router ID, that is the only parameter we have to decide, and calculated, uh, calculated ASM are parameters for BGP configuration. And this table is kind of an example of database we use. And on your right hand side, there's uh, parameters for BGP peering. We use a database for them and interfaces on switches are written in a JSON format here. And parameters for each host, oh sorry, and then we uh, run a Python script accessing to the database and the JSON file to generate the inventory files. Parameters for each host are written in host.json, and those for each switch type are in a file under a groove variable folder. Now we have inventory files, so we are ready to install the configuration, configuration with Ansible playback command. With this command, rendering the template with, uh, you can see on the left, this is the template, and with uh, parameters written in inventory file, uh, combined together, builds a BGP configuration named frl.conf here, because we are using frr. Then install it on switches, uh, these configurations are installed in, on switches via SSH. Actually, our BGP configuration looks much more complicated, containing more settings like interface and route map, but to make it simple for explanation, they are not written uh, in this slide. Now, we went through the three steps of automated development so that now traffic start to traverse across the network and it is ready for service with massive load. I put down tools on this slide in each step as a recap. And this is the last slide of my presentation today. Uh, we are still on a journey to our network automation. So we still have many things to do as future work. For example, we like to simplify the template 
that became complicated to deal with some functions like MC lag or uh, ACL. They are used on very limited servers. And in the future, we like to build multi-tenancy on cross network to meet the demand for isolated environments like fintech services. So um, this is all of my presentation. Uh, I hope you find something interesting in it, and I would appreciate any comments. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any comment or a question for Esther? Yep. Please use the microphone. Yep. Hi, uh, my name is Judy Akintola. Uh, quick question. With the BGP on the server uh, side, do you have to run the gate D or is he, how, how is that done? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear the last part. The BGP on the server. Mm -hmm, yes. How is that done today? How is that going? Yeah. How did you achieve? I see. Um, we have to run uh, software for BGP process in on hypervisor or a bare metal server. So in our case, we use FRL. That is the na name of the software for BGP. All right. Okay. Awesome. And do you have any overlay uh, today, or is that planned for future? Uh, actually not. Um, uh, we avoid to use overlay technologies like VXLAN because uh, we want to, we want to uh, stay away from uh, uh, overhead of the Correct. capsuling. So uh, in the future, we're considering about um, using a, a segment routing V6, and it uh, it mean it is a kind of native protocol, so you don't need um, uh, any overhead. Uh, so we're considering a use of uh, SRV6. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I just want to. I was going to ask you about the overhead, but you've answered the question already. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? We had a uh, maybe five minutes to <laughs> for talks. Uh, okay. Just I have a question for you. The, you mentioned about automation for a, a related to the eBGP setup or some configuration. When you're uh, doing the some automation steps, uh, the important thing is uh, how to uh, manage the, your, the, the version of the, the software. Uh, also, it's, um, uh, important thing is uh, how to do the implement the load back to the, if you did the, some, the function with the, the, some automation, Sometimes uh, it's, it's with the long the S numbers or long the, the number of the IPs. Sometimes we need to the load back to the, the functions. Could you explain the, the, the areas? Okay. Yep. Uh, about rollback, we use uh, Git to manage our cores. So if, we man if, you, if you have changes on cores, it can be rolled back. Uh, with Git, but if I talking about uh, parameters in database, uh, there is no way to roll back right now. So this is kind of uh, uh, future work. And um, uh, mention is kind of uh, a challenge for us because uh, all of us is not. Uh, Mm, yeah, so I have some issues on maintenance. So uh, I think your question is really good, but uh, the, my answer is uh, we're using Git and um, database, and in future I will find a way to roll back this uh, state of database. Thank you. Oh, last one. Yeah, sorry, uh, this is Raj from Bloomberg. Um, so, uh, it's a very interesting presentation. Thank um, you very much. Well, one of the questions I had was, uh, uh, you said you're not yet um, doing overlays, right? Uh, but you're looking for multi-tenancy at some point. So, I'm guessing for now, um, still you have a virtualized environment, right? Um, so, how many routes do you carry in the underlay so far? Um, 
that's one question. And uh, the other question is, um, I know you sort of mentioned the NOS that you're using. Um, uh, what is sort of your target um, chipset, if I can ask, um, that you're using this for? Right. In other words, is it uh, you know like a shallow buffer switch? Is it uh, slightly deeper buffer switch? How much of traffic stays within the pod? How much of it is um, north south? Okay. Um, uh, for first question about uh, number of routes, we have uh, more than eight thousand routes because we have uh, most specific route for VMs. So it equals to the number of VMs on our pri pri private clouds. And uh, for a second question about a target target uh, chipset, I don't have a good, good answer for that. But um, for now, I don't have um, a big problem in the hardware, uh, hardware chipset. So. Um, we don't have the specific target, so uh, sorry, I, I can't give you an Thank answer. You. Okay, maybe that's all. Thanks for your great presentation. Yeah, free speak can. Yep. <laughs> okay, let's move to the last speakers. Uh, the name is uh, Sinsio. Uh, is from <laughs> Arista Network Japan. His topic is uh, routing in dance topologies. What's all in first? Please. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Shishio Tsuchiya, Senior System Engineer of uh, Arista Network Japan. I'm a presentation, I will presentation of the routing in dense topology, what all of us has. Actually, this presentation submitted by the, the actual author is, author is uh, Chris Martin, who is the uh, SE director of uh, our United States, and also co-author is uh, Tony Lee. Uh, maybe uh, he is a very well-known person in this industry. He is, he is uh, author of uh, BGP4 and uh, several ISIS uh, RFCs. And also he is a developer of the uh, Cisco iOS, Juniper Junos, and uh, several uh, big router. And uh, he is working at software engineer at Arisa now, and he is the co-author of this document. Unfortunately, Chris cannot attend uh, this conference due to uh, schedule conflict. So I, I will, uh, I, I will uh, presentation as a uh, redelivery side because uh, this documentation were, uh, this presentation were documented. So let's start. Uh, this is a disclaimer. And the introduction is a rise of the cloud has changed uh, architecture, design and scaling require of the IP and the MPLS network. IGP scale limit Related to the BGP adoption as a de facto protocol for DC, like a, a previous presentation in line. However, BGP dump truck mentality overhead the semantic of a protocol because loss of topology detail reduce body of IGP based forwarding mechanism, like a, a loop through alternative. How do we get here? Traditional one design is sparse, and it depends on the cost of the long haul link router port and the concern about the IGP scale. Router vertical scale allows to the single control and the management point, and RSVPTE signaling concern due to soft dense middle point state on tunnel scale. Same design pattern in using over the 20, uh, 20 years. So let's com compare the scale up design and uh, legacy scale up design with a uh, scale out design. Scale, scale up design 
has a uh, site capacity limited by the max scale of the one quarter and uh, difficult to take quite edge router out of service maintenance. And this single purpose edge router increases capex and the core port count. Right, right figure uh, shows the scale out design. Scale out design is an elastic site capacity at more spine or leaf node. Simplify the operation with high availability and scale out reduce capex, uh, converges the edge, provide optionality. Right figure, uh, right figure shows actually social network, but uh, current data center and uh, internet design is uh, very similar with uh, this graphic. IGSP scale issue have led to the widespread use of uh, BGP in data center. BGP the adoption in the massive scale data center expanding. Uh, BGP application for the policy control via tooling. Uh, simple configuration if automated and scripted, as uh, uh, Nakashima said. Non scale symmetric topology makes it also tolerable. ECMFP leaf spine design reduce convergence web front to cross stage diameter. However, BGP can't really be used as an IGP in an aviator topology without almost impossible amount of configuration. So uh, why is uh, uh, BGP, uh, no, no, IGP link set protocol is, uh, uh, has a uh, limitation? Uh, I'd like to back to the history. Uh, Jamoy is, who is the author of OSPF, uh, he said OSPF, OSPF scaling recommendation, 50 router per area. And the Dave Cut is uh, sometimes presentation on Nano, and he compared the ISIS vs OSPF. And uh, he said several uh, limitations of uh, ISIS. Unnecessary redundancy flooding is big scale inhibitor in IGP, especially ISIS where refresh interval is large. This is uh, actually an example of IGP flatting. IGP flatting opportunistic and complete. Flat everywhere while maintenance transmission race to prevent endless flatting with split flatting. Like uh, uh, this node, out of a leaf node, uh, require the uh, query, and uh, uh, neighbor is doubling uh, uh, query, uh, flatting uh, query in double, and the spine also uh, double. In this bit part of grass, the amount of information flatting over well, the control plan at scale with no solution to date other than the avoidance. Goal should be reduce flat to minimal, like this topology, uh, by the flatting topology. So uh, I'd like to explain uh, several approach or in IETF. Uh, at, fa at first, I'd like to explain IGP dynamic flatting and the area abstraction and the hierarchy. Tonili is submitted several documentation of the ISIS enhancement, and uh, IETF currently, uh, currently integrate OSPF working group and ISIS working group to the LSR link state routing working group. So uh, this, uh, this document, uh, this internet draft discussion on the LSR working group. Currently, uh, this is a working group adoption. Maybe uh, it will be a working group document very soon. Important of the link set protocol in the modern networks, 
information regarding of the behavior and the characteristic state of the link in the network is easily conveyed into the IGP, which can later be used for the critical forwarding plan operation, like a next generation multicast beer and traffic engineering, both segment routing and RSVP. They are benefit from link state IGP. In the absence of uh, controller and the detailed topology discovery, it is the only way to do a segment routing RSVP, TE, and BR. TILFA topology independent loop through alternative is critical for ensuring resilience without RSVP TE FRR, which also require on the link state IDP. Importantly, the ability to extend, it, extend the detailed topology information as far across the network as possible alternative the need for the various hacks that aim to work around the loss of information at the IGP area level process boundary. Traditionally, a challenge due to IGP scale limit and recall challenge around inter-area link node protection, inter-AS, TE, inter-domain, everything. What is the draft LSR dynamic flooding all about? In the dense mode, uh, in the dense topology, the flooding algorithm is, that is the uh, heart of a conventional link state routing protocol calls a great deal of a redundant message. While the protocol can survive this combination, the redundant message is unnecessary overhead and delays convergence. Thus, the problem is to provide routing in dense, scalable topology with rapid, rapid convergence. For this, we need flattening topology that subset of the flooding topology. So requirement of the, uh, requirement for dynamic routing, requirement one, uh, provide dynamic routing solution. Reachability must be restored after any topology change. Requirement two, provide significant improvement in convergence. Requirement three, the solution must address variable of dense topology. Just address complete bipart topology such as K5, 8 is insufficient, multi-stage cross topology and the single variant must also be addressing. Addressing a complete graph is a good demonstration of a generally. I recommend for there must be uh, no single point of error the loss of any link node should not underlay hinder the convergence. Requirement five, dense topology error subgraph of master larger topology. Operational efficiency requires that in the dense subgraph not operating in the radically difficult manner than the remainder, remainder, remainder of the topology. Dynamic flooding, one node, uh, it's called the other area leader, is erected to the compute the flooding topology for the dense subgraph. Area leader erection generally follows the DR erection semantic with small difference. The flooding topology is encoded into the distributed as a part of the normal link state database. Not within the dense topology with only flat on the flatting topology. On link outside of the normal flatting topology, normal database synchronization mechanism would apply, but flatting we do not. Since the uh, flatting topology is computed prior to the topology change, it does not factor into the convergence time and can be done when the topology is at scale. 
If the node has not received any floating topology information, when the it receives new link state information, it should flat according to the legacy flatting rule. This is the simulation result. This side is a number of leaf. Uh, this side is a number of spines. And the percent of the improvement, as I predict, a massive amount of uh, improvement flat reduction can be achieved with dynamic flat optimization. Especially as the number of leaf and the spine is increased, improvement approach 95 percent reduction. And also, uh, Tony Lee submitted uh, another uh, draft, area abstraction. IS, IS areas are transparent for a traffic to the transit level one. Some node error link must be also be uh, level two. In the limit, IS, IS area do not aid scalability. Use case, data center ports as a level one area. And the area should be uh, atomic, atomic. Abstract an area as a single node, use segment routing for transit co uh, connectivity. Entire data center looks like a single node. This is entire of a whole of uh, data center topology, uh, data center networking, and uh, uh, each of the data center uh, connecting to each, uh, data center is connecting to each other, and the, let's zoom in the uh, one data center. And uh, data center, deep, deep and spine is as a level one. And also, uh, this is a three level uh, cross the uh, cross topology and the uh, core node uh, uh, configure the level two. And also uh, configure the inter data center as a level three. It is a new uh, level for the, this uh, internet draft. And also he submitted another uh, internet draft, area hierarchy. ISS multiple level three to eight. How do we hide L1 topology from the rest of the network while preserving the transmissivity? Abstract area itself into a single node represented. Actually, ISIS PDU Hello Heta has a eight bit and also a lawyer two bit express express level one and level two and L1, L2. And also uh, ISS Heta has uh, upper six bit is as a reserve. And uh, this idea is uh, use this reserve, reserved bit. And this is not new, but it has already built as Build in and we've seen the ATM, PNN network. And uh, if uh, we use this, this then the uh, level two uh, hiding level one topology, and also level three is like a, a two interface on the single, single node. Summary of ISIS native enhancement. The point of ISIS dynamic flatting, area abstraction, and area hierarchy works to the, is to the upgrade IGP to the need and the network requirement of the 21st century. Ultimately, uh, dynamic flatting is just a dynamic mesh group, which has a uh, uh, being around 20 years ago. Uh, maybe uh, this is, uh, mesh group is defined to avoid, avoid, full, uh, avoid full mesh over the ATM, uh, avoid flooding in the ATM 
full mesh networking, and it is already defined uh, RFC as informational. Area hierarchy and abstraction allows the build end-to-end -end scale out network and the single IGP for the topology discovery this mission. Topology independence can be used every, anywhere. I'd like to explain the, uh, another uh, topic, uh, lift, uh, routing in FAT3. Overview is lift and maybe uh, almost uh, same purpose is uh, with ISIS enhancement. Links set information useful for enhancement routing, traffic steering, and resiliency for the data center. Possibly to the merge the best both link set and the distance vector or path vector approaches. So Lyft aim to solve the data center routing problem by blending the best ten tenant of the both link set and distance vector routing into the new hybrid style protocol. It's also aim to the assist in com uh, configuration management by catering the, to the auto discovery and the other autonomic network need. Scope limited to the cross topology, Lyft has gained enough industry interest that uh, IETF has chartered a working group to develop the technology. Several talk has been uh, dedicated to the topic, include past uh, Nanog and the previous EPNIC, also JP, uh, Juniper Guy's uh, pre presentation on the previous APNIC. And uh, LSVR. LSVR is a link state vector routing, which is presentation on the, this apricot meeting uh, about uh, on the APOPS one session by the Randy Bush. Uh, overview of the link state vector protocol. Basic idea is to advan take advantage of a BGP LAS for information carrying them, and then run the SPF computation on the result of the link state database. Actually, BGP LAS is a uh, transit link state information via the BGP, but uh, this idea is a BGP LAS to the computed LSDB. However, LSVR changed the decision process to allow the SPF computation. SPF algorithm can be run in the strict or normal mode. And do link SPF and LRI proposed for the BGP. New prefix and BGP LS sequence number TLB added to the identify. Protocol is modified to trigger the uh, decision processes. LSVR summary, LSVR aim to the solve the problem of the IGP flatting scale limited by the leveraging BGP LS as a transport for the link state information and by modified uh, BGP decision process to understand this change and take advantage. The upside is uh, the massive scale data center with existing BGP infrastructure and the instrumentation can upgrade to this, this protocol and retain much of the existing operation at least theoretically. Downside is that we are again branding two protocol and changing their respective behavior in a way that may lead to unforeseen consequences. Last is uh, Open Hubric. Uh, Open Hubric uh, published on the Lost White. And uh, overview is overview of uh, Open Hubric. The idea behind uh, Open Hubric is uh, to create a simple auto discoverable underrated routing capability. Leverage ISIS, but with a lot of unnecessary stuff pulled out, like uh, external metric and the TE extension. 
add some new capability into the uh, streaming line operation in the link state uh, leaf spine fabric. Design only for the cross topology, but can handle multiple stage. Open fabric is another proposal to leverage existing protocol technology in order to more easier build data center without a lot of configuration complexity. Requirement are follows, provide full view of the topology from a single point over in the network to simplify the operation. Minimize the configuration of each IS in the network. Optimize the operation of ISIS within the spine and the fabric to enable scaling. Observation and the comparison. Observation. It is be becoming obvious that there is interest in arriving at protocol that scale extremely well, maintenance, topology and link behavior information, and minimize configuration completely. Scale out design principle are becoming more attractive. Segment routing is showing up more and more as a patch work on the over or even element solution for the some more difficult to address problem. Reducing protocol in the network allows for the more advanced protocol solution without all the user risk. This is a comparison uh, of the whole protocol. Uh, all of the protocol discussion on the IETF and the lift is type is a hybrid distance vector and the link state. Open fabric modified link state protocol and the LSPR is a hybrid distance vector and link state. IGP dynamic extended link state and the scale lift is unknown but maybe high and open fabric will be uh, medium because it focuses on the cross topology. LSBR is, uh, should be uh, high because uh, they are using a BGP. And also IGP dynamic uh, should be uh, very high because uh, it, uh, it has an area abstraction and uh, uh, area hierarchy. And the config is lift is autonomic and open fabric light and the LSBR high and the IGP dynamic is right. Because the LSBR using a BGP. Uh, topology is focus on, lift focus on the cross and the open fabric and the LSBR also uh, focus on the cross. And the IGP dynamic uh, is focus in the any, anywhere. And the complexity lift will be high and the open fabric is low and the LSBR medium. IGP dynamic is the medium. That is his opinion. And uh, there is a several approach as expected whenever there is a new technology against interest. There will be a pile on. SDN approach in there, ONF trade, aim to the remove any, no, any notion of the routing protocol from the equation. And lots of folk pushing different idea on how to tune IGP to support cross network. Uh, draft IETF LSR, ISI spine leaf extension, and uh, yeah, several, there is a several uh, approach. And what is the non cross topology? Uh, lots of uh, novel topology emerging in high performance convergence, not long before they uh, start showing up in data center. Especially, they uh, require low latency. And uh, new protocol algorithm possible on the program, program silicon uh, segment routing allows for the simplified virtual circuit path. Uh, this is the conclusion. This is the last slide, last slide of my presentation. If the goal to the leverage of much of the benefit to link state IGP as possible, then uh, fix ISIS and OSPF flooding behavior. 
aim to aim for additional scale via area abstraction additional hierarchy. ISIS is the best suite for this approach. And Open Fabric does some of this. ISIS dynamic and the area dynamic plotting area abstraction take uh, each further. If the goal to the leverage the best of link state IGP and the vector EGP, then there are uh, option here as well, Lyft and the LSVR. The author prefers publisher's approach as a way. I agree that this opinion because limited uh, new, tec uh, new technology development will likely save us from extended debate, low protocol uptake, and very possibility protocol correctionness and the stability problem. Yeah, this is the acknowledgement. Yeah, uh, my presentation ended. And uh, if you have uh, any question of uh, this presentation and uh, approach, please let me know. And also, uh, Chris can uh, welcome to the, your question. And, but uh, I, I also like uh, this topic. So uh, if you have uh, any interest in the question, then the, please let me know. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the last talk. Is there any questions for a talk? OK. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your uh, presentations. Yes, uh, this is uh, the end of the, this session. So thanks for the, all the participants. Please enjoy the coffee break and go back here the, after 30 minutes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>